So you want to build a DIY power wall. Well, you're in luck because I'm going to show you where to get some batteries. Building DIY power walls is a real thing now. There's a whole lot of people doing it. The video that Motherboard did on the whole subject is now nearing 1 million views. And likely now I have several videos that are past the 1 million views. So there are a ton of people that are watching us and they are starting their own projects. So with that, the first thing they have to do is find sources of lithium batteries. Luckily here in the States, we have several sources and we have our choice. We can get expensive cells, affordable cells, and even more affordable cells, and then even more affordable cells, right? So today I'm gonna compare two of them. The dreaded red Sanyo cells. These are known as heaters because a high percentage of them will heat up at a rate of half an amp, which is a rate at which we test them. So, so that's why they're known heaters, and that's why these are towards the lower end of the desired cells. I bought 200 cells worth of modem cells and I'm gonna show you the whole process from cracking them open to testing them and then figuring out how many of them are good and at the end we'll figure out how much they ended up costing per cell and per kilowatt hour. So let's get going. First thing you'll have to do is crack them open. It speeds things up if you do the same step to all of them. So you'll end up with all of them looking like this. Next, you gotta cut all the connections and remove the electronics. I'm weird and I save some of those things just in case. At this point, you should have a bunch of loose cells, ready to be tested. I use two kinds of charger testers, the sand flare and the Lidocala. They're almost the same thing. All right, here we are. We get to see the heaters. Oh man, 150 degrees, those are cooking. Gotta remove those. Here we go, that one right there, 150. Also a heater. Gotta mark them. 142. Uh, 135. What about these guys down here? There's one there. Gotta remove those from the pack. After they are done, make sure you mark them with the capacity and internal resistance. Here's how my 198 cells break down. 13 of them were 2200 milliamp hours, 10 were 2100, 23 were 2000, and so on and so on. A total of 129 are usable. 50 were completely dead at zero volts and I was unable to wake them up. And the rest, 19 are heaters, also not usable. Doing some quick math, that yields 65.15% usable. So now let's work out how much they cost. If you add up all the capacities of all these cells, you come out with a total of 903.91 watt hours of usable battery. So I paid $45 plus $20 shipping for each one of these boxes. I bought two boxes, so that equals a total of $130. So that comes to a grand total of $143 per kilowatt hour. Now that's not bad for brand name cells. Yeah, sure, you have to do a bunch of work and you have to find a way to get rid of 35% of the cells that were unusable. Now, I will do some experiments with those later in a future video, but for now, I wanna compare these, which are generally you know, considered as the worst of the modem cells to some of the other ones, right? Let's compare them to the more attractive 2600 milliamp hour cells, right? I also bought two boxes of the gray cells. These are higher quality. I didn't get a single one that was a heater. If you add up all of their combined capacity, you come out to a total of 1900 and 63.96 watt hours of usable battery. I paid $160 per box. I bought two boxes, so that comes out to a total of $320. Doing the math, that comes to a total of $163 per kilowatt hour. 
So these are about $20 more per kilowatt hour, but it's less work as generally you don't have to process as many cells to get to your target battery uh, capacity. Now for good measure, let's also compare batteries from another seller. Power to Spare offers uh, cells that come out of medical equipment and they yield a higher capacity. I bought a box that yielded 1148.93 watt hours and I paid $208 for that box. So if you do the math, that comes out to be around $181.43 per kilowatt hour. More expensive, but these were tested so there's less work on your part. You basically just have to re-sleeve them because the sleeves are in really bad shape, but he offers you extra sleeves so you can replace them. So there you go, three different commonly found model of cells by two different sources and at least the anecdotal cost per kilowatt hour, right? So now that we have this info, what can you make with these? Well, a bunch of things, it turns out. You can make packs like this using the, uh, you know, commonly used battery holders. You can build battery packs like this 24 volt to run my charger and charge uh, other batteries. You can build small battery packs like this to uh, run video equipment. You can make electric skateboards. You can even make an electric car with them. Or you can try one of my rapid build systems, right? Where you can just uh, snap the batteries in place like that. And then after you do a bunch of these modules, then you can create assemblies like this or bigger like this, right? And eventually you can fill whole boxes like this with about five kilowatt hours worth of battery. And then you can put it in the wall sort of like these guys. And you can run part or your entire home on batteries. So there you go. That's a quick overview of what we're doing with recycled cells. There's different levels of recycled cells. There's some that are better than others, some that are more expensive than others. But generally, they're a good deal if you don't mind getting your hands dirty and doing some DIY and put those batteries to use. We gotta use them or else they'll end up going back to China. So let's build projects. All right, I wanna thank you for watching this video, but before I go, I wanna remind you that if you're looking for cells, don't forget to look in the link down below. I try to stay up to date and finding all the best deals that are on the used, overstocked, and recycled cells market. So there's a chance that you might find some useful cells down in that link right there. Also, if you need some inspiration, we have a Facebook group, it's called Jehu's DIY Power Walls. Not to be confused by that other DIY Power Wall group, right uh there you'll find a bunch of people that are building stuff we're up to five almost five and a half thousand people a lot of them are building their own projects their own power walls uh all kinds of uh, projects related to batteries and that's a place where i post uh often uh updates on all the projects that i'm currently working on like this big giant power wall that i'm going to build and finally if you want to help me create some of these projects don't forget that you can become my patreon and uh for as little as a dollar a month you can help me financially pay for all these products that I buy and review and test and eventually design into usable pro DIY projects. So check out my Patreon and to my current patrons, thanks a lot for supporting all these projects. I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, and with that, I say goodbye and see you in the next video. Bye. All right, we got some packages. We got some packages. Let's see what we got. This is a battery go and it's supposed to be have a balancing option. So it would be cool to use it on one of our packs. We just uh, figure out how to connect it in there. And then it's got like this, yeah. We have to check this out. All right. Look at that Chinese letter. stuff in Chinese. Wow. Chinese stuff. All right, it's PCBs. Printed circuit boards. They are here. They are here, guys. That's 25, 50, 75. There we go. Let's open.
open one of these guys. 